Hey, Bruce Reba here. Author of Freedom's Quest on Amazon. And Woodpecker on Ken Novella. Hey, just leaving uh, Kennedy Space Center after another amazing day living in a sci-fi story. So, a um, couple, couple of warnings, emissions, please. Um, uh, I might be a little bit of a BS artist, which I'll... That comes later on in this, in this video. But um, if I cough, it's because of the truck air conditioner. If I mumble or stutter, it's because I mumble and stutter a lot. But um, today, at the um, where I work at the space station processing facility, I was able to slip into a tour group that was um, touring the um, the labs where they grow the vegetation uh, for the space station. Or they, or they bring seeds back from the space station and test out uh, the effects of radiation and microgravity. And um, uh, as part of the tour group, there was uh, people who were the Einsteins of the radiation and plant world in deep space were, asking, were answering questions. And, you know, I told them, I says, well, I'm not even smart enough to ask you the right questions. But I, I did my best. And um, and they were, uh, they graciously pretended um, like they were having a good time, which always helps. And maybe they were. So um, the one lady, she was like an expert in plants and microgravity. And I, I've actually read about her in the, in the KSC News magazine. But so she was telling me about uh, microgravity and uh, and then the effects of radiation in deep space and their plans on different things on the moon and Mars and uh, and so I got that got me interested in the radiation kick. So and she pointed to the, this guy next to her and said, uh, "Yeah, well here he's answer he'll answer all your radiation questions." And it was kind of a like a younger guy, maybe thirty two or something. And he, um, he was NASA's expert on radiation, deep space, ra deep space radiation and plants. And he told me all about the tests they're going, the tests they're doing, what types of radiation, some of the effects. And I was fascinated. I was geek enough. Of, it was enough of a geek to be really fascinated. So uh, during the uh, process, during this explanations, I looked at both of them. This is where the BS artist comes in, maybe, and said, oh, because we were talking about Mars, or maybe I had directed, <laughs> maybe I directed the, can the conversation towards Mars and the canyons. And because um, the guy goes, yeah, uh, well, I said, um, you know, I'm girl I, I wrote a science fiction story. I didn't, I didn't bother to say it's woodpecker. But I said part of it takes place in the in the canyons of Mars and describing the uh, the biology and the plant growth on the inside of the canyon walls. And um, they were very gracious in listening to me. Um, actually, they chimed in quite a bit. They were, they were kind of fascinated, actually. And then I mentioned also that uh, I had my character, some of my characters bioengineered uh, to maybe live on Mars a little bit. And uh, of which the lady promptly told me a, a far dis more disturbing bioengineering story about sci fi story. So that's cool. It's so cool talking to smart people. It's just, it's really kind of rewarding. But, um, they uh, certainly humored my uh, my book, and the uh, and the one lady was even went a step further and said, uh, "Well, keep on writing science fiction because that's how science progress." This was her words. That's how science progresses to the next level is by people imagining what's next. And so and that was cool. But so um, anyway, I learned a lot today, and I was able to. Uh, learn a little bit that I can maybe add to some future stuff, future stories. 
And uh, by so by the way, if you get a chance uh, for some rather disturbing science fiction, check out my um, my book Woodpecker on Kindle Vella. And uh, hey, Bruce out. <laughs>